Hey, 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 how's it going, folks? It's Jamie here, and today we're going to take a look at my Kramer Pacer Vintage. Um, I want to make sure that my stuff is working properly, and I'm going to also share my stream to social media. So bear with me for one moment while I get this all pulled up. And share it to my friends. And that should be pretty good. So I think I'm set. I just want to check the chat, make sure all my stuff is working. I'm pretty sure it is. I'm going to grab the guitar that we're going to be looking at today. And um, we're going to do some stuff to it because I have a little bit of a story for you. And it's a happy ending. So I'm, I'm really pleased with the outcome. And I'm excited to get this thing back up and running so I can play it live. So right here we have my Kramer Pacer. This is the satchel model. This is the one that we worked on that one day. We installed this, this awesome three-way switchcraft switch, a uh, CTS control knob here, and uh, what else did we do to it? We put some stainless steel FU tone stuff on it. We put the uh, big, huge brass block on there with some noiseless springs on there, and then I put a, a rock star sticker on it. You might not be able to see that very well, but it's Zebra. Pink Zebra, and it does say Rockstar on there. And uh, my friend Heather made that for me, so uh, it's really cool. Um, to get going on this, we only need to do a few things, really. We need to take the strings off, and we need to loosen the bolts on the back of this. So you might be asking yourself, why are you taking the neck off, off this guitar if it's working fine? Well, um, this is a factory second, and unfortunately, this is the I, I have 15 Kramers, about 14 or 15 Kramers. They're all uh, the current lineup. Um, except for one, I have one that's a 1989 Kramer, but aside from that, uh, the only issue that I had with this very guitar was that the frets were sprouting a little bit. So the string will get caught just like that. If you can see that, hopefully you can. And when I'm playing this thing and it happens pretty much all the way up here. Yeah. See, it's already, it's catching even on that first fret there without me touching it. So it does have fret sprout, um, being a second, it might have been a, just an oversight or something like that, but either way, it's not a huge deal. The folks at Epiphone Kramer, what they did was they just sent me a new neck for this thing, and it actually has some of the hardware on it. We're going to take a look at that quick. So this is the replacement neck. It's uh, identical. to the one that's currently on the guitar. Has nicer wood grain, that's a plus, that's a huge plus. A Little bit nicer wood grain, all the way down the neck. I really like the way this thing looks. Now the back, this one does seem to be oiled. The custom shop, I believe, set this one up for me, so I'm gonna have to live without the oil, but I do have oil if I ever decide to do that. I do that on some of my guitars. I'll oil the back of the neck with uh, true oil or tongue oil. I forgot what it's called, but I have a bottle of that somewhere. Um, has the hardware on there already. It even has some Allen wrenches on there. Just push that in, tighten this up. It's really convenient to have those. A lot of Kramers do come with an Allen holder on the back of the neck here so that um, if you want to, you know, change your tuning or something like that or or fix your tuning if it's a little bit out and you're bottomed out on your fine tuner so you can always loosen this nut here and tune it up here lock it back down and then you should be ready to rock and good to go now i am looking at this neck the frets it's it's uh it's very comfortable on this one i can tell a little bit that um this the one that has the fret sprout i can tell that the frets are sticking up you definitely do feel it um right up here in the first few frets um on this uh, bass side, bare tone, or whatever you want to call it, high, the low E side, um, that feels perfect. There are no issues there. However, um, this one is perfect across the board, literally. Zero fret sprout. 
the frets are done very they're finished very nicely and they're polished so we're going to get going on that and to do so what we need to do is we need to first remove the strings on the guitar i know you won't be able to see the entire guitar this uh this entire time let me look at my chat here should have some people in here if i'm correct i want to say hello to them chat is clear oh and i can hear my voice already so we're good to go i don't need nobody all right so i have for this job a phillips screwdriver and you need an allen wrench i this is my trusty one so i have those two items there and i do want to use my string winder and i think that's pretty much it let me get that i picked this thing up i've been living without one it's like 30 bucks Ooh, this thing is a freaking treat man so 30 bucks guitar center get yourself an ernie ball power peg pro this is the rechargeable version the green one is very nice as well but you have to change out the AA batteries this one you just plug it in with the supplied power supply so very handy tool when you're restringing four guitars for your show i would highly recommend that and just makes life a lot easier especially on uh reverse headstock guitars which i despise restringing um yeah enough talking let's jump into it if you guys have questions at any point of this video then just drop it out down in the chat and i hope i see it within a timely manner so um pretty pretty sure i have everything i need here um maybe a cloth for the finish yolo yeah yolo okay so first thing need to remove the last two there's another one one more okay and down here on this side you'll, you will be able to see this this is how you remove the strings on your guitar so with a floyd rose equipped guitar i know it's a little bit of a mystery for new guys they don't really know how they operate this one is floating so by that you can press down and you can pull back so this is a tension based system it does have springs in the back that counterbalance the string tension and um, what we need to do here is i like to hold the bar up and you need to loosen these six screws here these six screws will they push these small insert blocks and it crushes the string into the saddle and yeah they don't slip out nothing so that's why this is called the double locking system is because it locks your string in down here so that they cannot slip you don't have to worry about a ball end slipping inside of the the block like on a stratocaster that's why they have all those little tricks to keep them in tune um or have to purchase the fender bullet strings and then you have the other portion of the locking system right here so that's why it's a double locking system so to do that again just push down loosen go to our a string loosen I'm pushing down so that I can access these screws a little bit easier and so that I keep my Allen wrench away from the finish on the body because I don't want to chip it up or scratch it up. I would be devastated. But it might happen in this video. You never know. I mean, I'm kind of an idiot sometimes. It's been a while since I've actually messed up a guitar like that. However, it does happen. Okay. And then I'm going to screw these back in just by hand so that these little blocks don't fall out because they can they can actually come all the way out okay and i'm going to simply remove the screws i do have the ball ends down here which was a a big mistake sound Okay. 
Last string. Get this A string out of here. What I like to do with my strings is take them all. They're getting snagged on stuff. I take all my strings, little E, and I just do one of these. Pull it through so that you're not stepping on these because I'm going to toss these on the floor and then throw them away later. But yeah, that kind of keeps them all together. All right, so next thing, we have the strings off the guitar. We do need to take off that retainer bar because the only thing that the new neck does not have on there is the retaining retainer bar, which it does have the two holes drilled for. So we got to take this little guy off right here and put it onto the new neck. I'm going to use a small bit. This one might be a bit too large. Let's see what we got. That's what's nice about this uh, Cusack turn screw, the guys that make pedals. This is my favorite screwdriver here. It has a few bits on there. You can also turn this around. And then you have standard flathead screw. But just counterclockwise, not too much. This is already out. Second one. And I'm going to keep the screws there. Carefully move the guitar out of the way, and then I'm going to put the string retainer bar onto the new neck. This is rounded, so you want to make sure that the round part goes down. So the flat part is on top. Like you'll see the flat part, round part goes down. So you might be wondering what the purpose of this bar is. So the break angle, like if we're looking at the strings from the side here, once we remove these pads, and I'll leave one on to show you, but I need to take these off anyways. Okay, so the string runs underneath this pad here. The pad will clamp down on the string and then you'll tighten the screw. So when you tighten the screw, if your string is breaking down to this point to make it into this first tuning peg, what's gonna happen is this is going to put tension on the string in this, in this area. Um, the string retainer bar preloads your string with tension so that when you tighten down this this pad it's not going to send your guitar out of tune um, if this is too high or non-existent on a headstock design like this which is very common in the super strat world this is a very common type of thing you see it on a lot of s type guitars and um, there's another company that um, does the same kind of thing um yeah, you want to make sure this bar, or you can always install a bar too, it's just two holes, but um, you want to make sure that this is a little bit lower than this point here so that it alleviates that break angle a little bit. It's going to put a more extreme angle on your string right here because it's going to be forced down and then to your first tuner. However, um, if you were to tighten this down without that, then it's going to send your string sharp. So that's something to keep in mind if you play a Super Strat style guitar that has a Floyd Rose on it. Um, hopefully I explained that well enough if it made sense to you. But um, just looking at it should be able to you know, kind of understand what's going on there. The other thing to, to take note of is 
to make sure that you're leaving enough room here to access your truss rod. There's a truss rod hold hole right there. See right there. All right, so the neck is prepared. This thing's ready. And we're gonna take the neck off of the Kramer Pacer. Okay, so for this part, this does use a larger Phillips screwdriver. You, you wanna use one that fits these screws very well or else you're gonna risk stripping them out I do not suggest you strip out those screws because it's very important to have these tight. Um, it's just four screws. Let's go into it. And while I take these out, sometimes guitars, depending on the angle of the body in comparison to the neck, like on a Les Paul, Les Pauls are um, set neck or neck through so they don't use bolts on the back as often. Um, I think that's actually non-existent or very rare. I don't think I've ever seen that, but um, some are shorter, some are longer. That's what I'm getting to here. So I just took this first screw out. The next thing I'm gonna do is take a back one out. And I'm holding the Phillips bit down at the bottom. The screwdriver is not gonna move so that if this hand slips, the screwdriver is not going to go into my paint. I'm pretty sure it's going to be the same depth screw. I would suggest not using a power drill for this part. I mean, you can do it, but you do it so many times and uh, you're going to strip out some wood there, buddy. It's very important to have your guitar, to have your guitar actually stay in tune. It's very important for these bolts to be tight. So comparing, yeah, see there, perfect example. So the, the shorter ones go in the front, longer ones go in the back. So yeah, take notes there, folks. If you ever want to try doing this yourself, which you shouldn't have to, like I said, if you buy a Kramer guitar, there's pretty much no issues at all, but like I said, uh, the guys over at Kramer were very stand up and I offered, I was like, Hey, you know, you guys gave me a, a really good deal on this guitar. They sent it direct from Nashville. Um, this color is really rare. So that's why, um, again, like I said, it's a factory second. Um, I was like, what I'll do is I can just send the guitar back to you guys and you guys can, you know, make sure you get it done right and everything like that. And, you know, they don't necessarily know how I work on guitars. However, uh, they were gracious enough to just send me a new neck in the mail and very, very thankful that for that level of service. That's the first time, uh, 14 guitars later. And I have, I have factory seconds and I've seen and sold. If you look back at my motor city guitar video, those two Kramers I sold because I, the video, um, I mean, people saw the video obviously, and they knew they were for sale and these are kind of sought after for the price that they were selling for 800 bucks is significantly cheaper than they were new one and two they were in really good shape they were factory second brand new from the factory <laughs> like i mean doesn't get any better than that okay the next thing to note going back to this part is we have a little spacer here we have a it's a gasket around this metal plate and um you want to make sure kramer is a readable top down so i can read kramer this way you don't want to put it in this way. Just you'll look like a goof if you put it in this way. So <laughs> make sure you just install it the way it came off. And this might be a very tight neck pocket. Oh, nope, it wasn't. Okay. So there's our heel there. Everything looks good. Maybe I can show you some of that fret sprout here. Maybe. If I get real close, maybe not, hmm, whatever, old news, new neck, okay, so there's a shim here, don't want to really move that, um, just use my shirt, wipe off anything that might be around here, and we're going to fit the new neck, so, this is the moment of truth, folks, this should be a very very snug fit, which it is. 
Yes. Okay. And I can actually see, you can't see, but I can see in these holes, and I know that this is lined up. So, again, clean off this area here. Just because fingerprints. And then our long ones go in the back. Short ones go in the front. Is that a short one? Or am I an idiot? It was a short one. I'm going to just get these started barely in the neck. I'm actually going to do this side first over here. Anyways, how's your Monday today? You guys doing pretty well? You have Aljon in the chat? Aljon, thank you. You're a gen gentleman and a scholar. Okay, so that one's biting, biting into the wood very well, which is good. That ensures a very nice and tight fit. I'm not making any new holes right now. That's also a huge plus. When you get aftermarket necks and stuff for you, you guys making project guitars, you want to make sure that you mark and drill. Mark and drill. And I'm putting quite a bit of torque on the screwdriver. I'm sure this is the first time this neck has ever seen a screw. So they just drill it out to the required size for these screws. That's good. Check them all. That's awesome. Great. Also great. Which is my lame t-shirt here. And we're going to check the fitment here. Okay. So you can see that the neck is sucked down into the body. No gaps anywhere. That's a good fitment, boys. I guess it should be. It's the same exact neck. So very, very satisfied with that. Correct angle and everything. And we're ready to actually restring this thing. Um, I'm not going to do that. Oh, should I do that? Uh, 
Let me know in the comments. I'm going to read stuff. Ah, Byron Joe made my pickups. I'll show you guys those really quick. Um, how do I do that? Can I just do this? Go to Facebook. Uh, time. How do you use Facebook? Um, Instagram. Wait. I know what I must do. All right, I, I pretty much suck. I suck at social media, guys. All right, so what we're going to do is show you on my freaking phone because I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot goof. Some notifications there. Look at my new pickups. You see them? They're freaking precious. And Byron's send, sending these out to me, so I'm really freaking stoked. Uh, he said shipping was not $8, it was $12. And that's fine by me because I'm going to be putting some sweet pickups in one of my Kramer guitars that I'm very fond of. So, uh, and, uh, should I restring this, like, for real? <sighs> sure. Al, John, I'll do it for you. I just have so much to do. I just finished up my rig. I built a new snake. Um, building a lot of other stuff. Yeah, I, I'm going overboard. However, it's worth it. I just need to keep pushing myself and telling myself it's worth it. I know this was definitely worth it. We'll get some strings on it. Let me just, let me go get a pack of strings. So these are the strings I use. Um, they don't sell them on their website anymore, but these are hand wound in the USA. I've been using these for the past year and a half, two years. And um, this is what I used to use here. I used to use the Diodario NYXLs and I love them. So I just uh, use some of my bonus points. I've purchased so many strings and uh, Diodario products like their cable kits. Um, probably about six or seven cable kits um yeah i've just always been a fan of these but when i started getting these for a much better price and they don't break or really oxidize on me uh i mean save seven dollars a set so eventually when they run out of these they sell them to me because i'm a morally artist however when they finally run out of the 9 to 42 i'm gonna have to go back to this or uh, I guess we'll see what's on the market. Like I said, I've been out of the market for two years. Maybe you guys can tell me a, a good string company to go with or something to try for 80 Shred and all that good stuff. If you play these and and know I like these, then um, yeah, suggest something similar or tell me to just stick with these. But yeah, I just got them on the rewards program. If you open up a pack of these, uh, what you get inside is a code. So you enter the code in the Players Circle, Circle website um yeah it says right there get rewarded and i've gotten a varsity jacket that says diadario on it um i've gotten a bar stool a wooden stool and recently i just ended up using the remain blah, 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 remaining points that i had there we go i'm getting back into the flow here Re remaining points that i had to purchase a a few packs of strings and it was completely free so i got three sets of strings and i have two left but um, we're going to be putting these on there because that's what I use. And this guitar is already set up for this exact brand of string. Because 
as you know sometimes if you put different brands on even if it's the same gauge it can throw your stuff out but uh, it all has to do with stretching i'm sure i don't i don't know i'm not gonna claim to know there's that um string cutter is in another dimension right now so i have no freaking clue where that thing is it's probably my backpack okay get out of my life these are cool all numbered by hand i thought that was always a really cool touch you know somebody went through these individually um and packaged them i thought that was always a really neat touch doesn't really matter but hey is what it is all right i'm gonna get these posts turned the correct way i like them all the face um are you on I like them all to face this direction so that I can just slip the string in. Okay. First one kind of in, and this is about the area I cut them. It's the back, the front of the whale tail. I'm going to loosen these screws up a little bit. Not too much so that they don't hit the paint. Doesn't need a lot. And I'm going to insert my string. Finger tight. Torque that puppy down a little bit. Okay, so we have our string in there. I'm going to bend the tip out of the way on this end, which you can't see. <laughs> One. Give it a snip from the whale tail. All right. Two. Oh, mother. Sorry, I had to get a, a towel quick because I do not trust myself because I'm a goof. I'm just doing, like, I have the camera right here and I usually like to hover over the guitar. So I'm going to put that there so I don't freaking slip like an idiot. So that's already tightened. I'm st still an idiot. I don't... Uh.
G-string. Cut. Throw in my pile. We are tuning this to E-flat. Check the comments. Oh, we have we have people in here now, guys. Look at that. Okay. Uh, Sean Zimmerman. How's it going, man? Hey, all. We have the Wilson Project. Sweet. Thanks. Um, I'm sure somebody said something. Um, Darren is here. Oh, my battery's dying. Oh, that's fantastic. It'd be cool to get some pickups with clear bobbins. Hmm. Well, I'm glad you said that because I know a company that winds those. He actually has those. Did I miss you blocking the trim? Aljon, that's baby talk. I don't block the trim here. That's, I don't block my trims when I restring. I'll show you what I do. Besides this thing, like I never use this and the camera is right in my face. And you want to make sure these strings go in the center of that block. There's a groove there, you'd see it. Last string. I like to leave my E a little bit longer. Reason being is because if I'm playing a show and I break a string and really want to play this guitar, it's not going to break at the nut. It's going to slip out right here or break down here. So if more winds up at the tuning peg, what I can do is cut the end and then I can reinsert it. It's kind of a, a quick tri trick for you. Leg, guitar.
Okay, so that bridge is flat. That's how I know that I'm super close to the tuning I need. So yeah, there's that. You can tell. Yeah. That's pretty much that, guys. What I'm going to do is this: these old pads are the same size. They're the same ones. Put the old ones back on there. Because they're not grooved up or anything. These are original Floyd Rose parts that are used on this guitar. Minus the FU tone stuff. But it comes stock, standard, from Kramer. With Floyd Rose FRT 01000. Which is a great trim. I swear by them. Give this a nut a little lock. Okay, so that low E, why I strung it, strummed it, why I strummed it, is because when I'm locking these down, I want to know if it's changing the pitch at all. And it did not. So technically, I should be able to strum this. And it's still in tune. See the break angle there? I mean, do you say it? So that's what stops um, the strings from going out of tune when you lock these down again. So um, now you might be able to visualize it a little bit better. That's why they put this bar here. Um, yeah, pretty much that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to clip these ball ends because not about that life. And then I actually just take my packet here and I dump them in here. Take all the string ends. Let you guys comment, ask questions on anything that I did during this video before I cut you guys loose. I'd love to have you guys subscribe. It'd mean a lot to me. I'd love to uh, interact with you folks. Um, I check my comments and messages on YouTube just about every day, even though I'm not posting as frequently lately. Um, rig building shows a lot of different factors come into play um and it's not really an excuse i do have some stuff i had to do this was a big one i definitely had to get this done but i'm so glad that i got it done now so i can play this guitar um i will be taking it with me i have a show on wednesday just looking at it the strings are all in the right spot mm. yeah we're good Super good. It's gorgeous fing figuring. I almost said fingering. <laughs> but such a, a great guitar, and I'm I'm glad to have it. So again, to the to the guys at Kramer, um, you know who you are. Al John's in the chat right now. If you haven't seen the episode featuring Al John, um, you want to get over to evhandgeartv.com. Um, I'll put a link down in the description once this live stream is over so that you can go over there and watch the first episode of Kramer Corner. Um, it's all about Kramer, uh, Kramer artists. It's talking about Kramer guitars. And yeah, you can have some really cool um, discuss, get, blah, 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 discussions live with those guys and um, talk about uh, new and exciting news that's in the works or, you know, all that cool stuff. Um, yeah, that's pretty much all I really wanted to do and say. Let's check this chat. Aljohn says, I love the Morley team. I've been with them since like the late 90s. I love them too. Um, I use the Morley Bad Horsey too. I have like four or five of them because of different rigs and um, some I've had to service over the years. But 
Um, I've only had one fail on me. It's because it got rained on, which um, after my house fire in 2014, story for you, I had a Morley Wah. It might have been this one here. No, it wasn't. It wasn't this one. This one's all dirty. Gross. But I had a bad horsey too. And uh, it rained and it freaking fried the thing and only got a few drops on it. The guys at Morley were super cool because I just bought it. I just bought this thing from them. They sent me the strings that I ordered and then they sent me the Morley Wah because I wanted to uh, replace my one that was squeaking. Getting It was abused. I stomp on it really hard. I stomp on it like some like if somebody's smashing a skull um, in like a horror movie or something like that's how I stomp on it. It's really bad, um, but yeah, never had one break until it got like a few <laughs> some rain on it, and then like it was, which is understandable. I mean, you're not supposed to get it wet, but I ha in 2014 I had that fire, and like it didn't burn up. I just cleaned off like this the black soot and whatever, but it was sitting in like two inches of water, right, and then cleaned it up let it dry out a month later i went to try to plug it in and turn it on it's worked fine for the past year and a half so i put that one back on my pedal board but uh yeah they took it back and uh actually fixed it for me they said it was a you know just a fluke or something like that i i've never had any issues i use the little alligator two um not the number two i just also use it it's a volume pedal works great in your effects loop if you want it to uh just kind of lower the level, put it in front of your amp if you want it to act like a volume knob on a guitar. So there's another trick for you. So uh, a few different uses for a volume pedal. You can make it act like the volume knob on your guitar, kind of roll down the gain a little bit and swell off, or you can have it lower your level, which I prefer. So I run mine in the effects loop. Or the Morley M2, it's a an expression pedal. And they told me how to modify mine with one wire on the inside to make it compatible with the line six helix so that's what i did it's been working absolutely fantastic for the past year and a half so um that modification was a success apparently um it survived a sandstorm too oh oh wow you're telling me about it so okay um ah uh, did i miss you blocking the trim i already dressed that i don't do that i i just never do it some guys put like a nine volt battery down here i just i I just hold the bar with my hand. So uh, maybe that's good. Maybe that's bad. I don't know. That's just always the way I've done it for the past four or five years. And I'm able to fly through string changes. This was actually slow because I'm sitting here. I had to go get this dirty old rag and <laughs> which needs to be washed. I'm sorry, Chris from Lizard Spit, if you're watching, but I use this for everything. Um, this is like my oldest one. This is fret gunk. If you want to use the Lizard Spit fret polish. That's what comes off your frets, believe it or not. Like, I'm sure, even though I hardly played this neck, I'm sure it would, yeah, definitely come off this. If you guys ever want to see that. Maybe right now, if you ask. Um, But yeah, you're welcome for the shout out. What's up with the Floyd pads? Um, Well, um, what's your question about them? The Wilson Project asked. What can I try to answer for you today, the Wilson Project? Like these? Are you talking about these pads? There's no, there's nothing wrong with them. Um, yeah, Bad Horsey Two been around the world with me four times and still killer. Yeah, I mean I've I had the one that was just out of the box weird, but other than that, zero issues. It's such a strong piece of because the thing is on the inside of those wah pedals and volume well the volume is optical the m2 has the nylon string on there so it's kind of like the i believe the ernie ball volume it's the junior volume junior pedal or something um i think those use the nylon string on the inside right and I've never seen them snap or anything. I'm sure they're very strong and robust, but the optical is kind of the way to go because it's a light sensor on the inside with a shutter on the on the bottom of the, the foot pedal. So it's it's really nice. Survived a sandstorm? Holy holy crap, man. Well, they're strong pedals, I'll tell you that. Um I might as well show you. 
I'll do like two frets, two or three frets on this. Let me be right back. So this is what I'm talking about here. It's the Lizard Spit Ultimate Fret Polishing System. Uh, it comes with 24 polished pads, two fretboard guards, which are right here. They say lizardspit.com on there. And then one finishing cloth, which that's what they're supposed to look like. But mine's all freaking... <laughs> but yeah, so these pads, you just wipe them on your fretboard. I don't even use these guards. I'm sorry, Chris. Um, I just kind of fly through it and just don't touch my fretboard as much. I mean, you just got to have some skill, grace, and precision to get that done. But yeah, who's using this? Jamie, uh, that's me. Um, Dean Cassione, El Caldwell, Johnny Hilland, Hedris Ramos, Ronnie North. That's a cool cat there. Ben Lacey, Jeff George, Jay Roberts, Neil Mellower, Lloyd Wallace. He's from Michigan too. He's really cool. Um, Gia Federico, Mike Kerr, and Jake Kershaw which he's also from Michigan, and he's a really great player. That guy is very versatile. Awesome kid. Um, he also uses the Job Tone pickups too. So, yeah, the more you know. But I, I did help Lizard Spit um, kind of put the bug in their ear because I've never been one to um, really worry about my frets. I've never polished them or anything. And it's I've been playing for, like, since I was eight and I got my first Super Strat guitars when I was like 11, 12, and I've just never done it. And he also has an automotive line of products that do include some metal finishing or polishing products, whatever you want to say. Um, I can't really talk very well. My, my throat is dry. So he has metal polishing products in the automotive care section of his website. Um, I asked him, I was like, how hard would it be to do better than another brand and he said i mean super easy and i said well technically all you got to do is be two percent better right you know if you apply yourself just a little bit harder than the other guy you're going to come out on top and then if you also price your stuff correctly um make it easily accessible have it available in select stores online should be a no-brainer right so he was able to bust this stuff out and he sent me um the prototypes for this uh, we worked on different packaging ideas just, and some of the stuff never came to light. However, um, he was really interested in this kind of system here, as opposed to a tube where you squeeze it onto a cloth. Um, it, I've done a lot of guitars with this. This is my first package that I've opened. Um, I've done so many guitars with just 24 pads and I still have about three in here. So, uh, I probably done 10 guitars. 10, 11, 12 guitars. So one or two pads can get me through. Do the math there. I suck at math. If you show me algebra, I'll run and scream and kick and cry. Um, if you show me multiplication, I'll probably just like walk away from you and never talk to you again. Just don't do it. If you want to put a guitar on my lap and have me play it, that's fine. Um, work on your guitar, also fine. But uh, math, I suck at, so yeah, I can't do math there. But probably 10 guitars. I don't know, I'm kind of an idiot. But we're going to show you that right about now. So I'm going to put this guitar back in its cradle where it belongs. <laughs> Can I get this like down a little bit more? Ooh. Ooh. Look at that freaking shadow right in front of what I'm trying to do. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of these precious little little boy pads. That sounded really bad. I'm sorry. Okay, so this has a cleaning agent inside of it. It's a little felt square or something. And I'm going to just do one of these. Look at that. Isn't that freaking nuts? And that's what this is. FYI. I wasn't lying to you. And then you just wipe it off. Can you see that? 
You should see the shine difference. I think that's kind of insane. Will you freaking focus, you idiot camera? Okay, whatever. Um, let's do another one here. So you just kind of go along. I'll show you how fast this can be done. You want to get the entire fret. I'm going to show you this pad. You can see it's getting on the fretboard, which is fine. It's not going to do anything to it. But if you're really particular about your fretboard, I guess, they do give you these, which if you just open up the little bag, they have two different sizes in here. These are stainless steel, medical grade stainless steel, I believe. And they fit on your frets. Like that's a, that's a perfect freaking fit. And then look at this one. Also, are these the same? No. One's for up here. Ah, I see what you did there, Chris. One's for up here where this won't really work too well. Chris, you're freaking, we never talked about that. I can't take any credit for that one, but um, <laughs> it's, it's pretty much that. So um, if you want to pr protect the wood on your fretboard, just do one of these. But um, I, I don't like using it personally. <laughs> yeah look at this okay my finger it's like help help and then look at this freaking thing i did uh one two three four five six seven eight nine frets imagine if i did the whole freaking thing it'd be like be ridiculous is what it'd be oh so pretty and then use um use a light cleaner on maple you don't want to use the uh fretboard conditioner on something like this i mean i do <laughs> but you're not supposed to do. pretty much just wipe it off with some elbow grease you're never going to notice the black on a rosewood fretboard but if you don't wipe it off, then it's just going to get right back on your frets and all of your fingers. You're going to be like, what the heck? But yeah, look how shiny. Shiny and then just super dull. Get other things out of here so this will focus. Will you please? Yes, look at that. Oh. Oh, please. Focus. Down a little bit. Will you focus? Oh, this camera is trash. But you can see, and now it feels like... Like I can hear this, but I can't hear myself scratching on this. You can hear... <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, they're really smooth though, guys. So there's that. I can use this as a demo neck. I'll just let these corrode to to heck, to H E double hockey sticks. And then uh I'll use this for uh the fret polish demonstrations. That's a good idea. Show my friends. Um I hope you guys enjoyed the video today. I know this was probably an hour long stream now, and I still have other stuff to do. Um but Thank you so much for watching tonight, guys. Again, um, subscribe button right down in the corner there. So if you want to do all that kind of stuff, you totally can. And I totally appreciate it. Um, check this stuff out. It's on www.lizardspit.com. And um, all these cool cats are using it. I mean, except for this guy. He's, this guy is like an idiot. Don't listen to him. Um and then it's uh, supposed to polish all types of fret wire. So if you have that question, there's the answer for you. Because I have gotten that question a few times. And it says it right on the packaging. So all types of fret wire. This is cool. Just make sure you turn it off afterwards. And then this locks so you, can, you, can't, um, you can't shoot 
Um, that's a safety. Ooh, forward and reverse. So that's cool. Go to Menards. Get yourself one of these guys. I've had this for life. And then Cusack has these neat screwdrivers, but you can also get stuff like that at Menards. Um, yeah. Guys, go enjoy your, your afternoon. I have stuff to do. Uh, thank you so much for taking the time to watch. I am out of here. Cheers.